drive it to the race, but we're already on the race. <laughs> Welcome to Driving to the Race with Larry and Dinelia. And this time we are actually at the race and we're driving out of the race, but we thought we'd record anyways. It was very actually quite interesting coming in. Um, and the reason we didn't record coming in was because um, we had Larry's children in the car and we're talking about certain things had to do with the prison situation on the planet with coronavirus and basically educating them a little bit on how to cope with the social pressures around different items and things such as um, people wanting to vaccinate them and things like that. Get a flu shot. Yeah, getting a flu shot. We were talking about lions and lambs. And one of the fascinating things about it is that when we got to the res, the person, the, this is one of the reses that have closed uh, their doors to non-residents. So unless you live here or work here, you're not allowed into the res. And um, what was interesting is that the person guarding the gate from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night is a senior citizen <laughs> who is supposed to be high risk, you know, um, you know, he's really charming and everything, but you know, a little bit worried about him. You know, <laughs> he's supposed to be in home shelter and, you know, in a high risk uh, demographic. And he's the person who talks to everybody on the road, comes up to, uh, right up to the car and, you know, so, yeah, I thought that was a bit strange. We're going to bring him a bit of a Milena's home cure. That is ginger, honey lemon well i put a little bit of chaga in it too make it a little bit of brown and uh we'll give him a jar of that and he can make <laughs> tea every time he goes home that's the thing that i wanted to make and i put all the ingredients yeah <laughs> and then you got the recipe from milena yep so your recipe her recipe it's like matched <laughs> up today when we were doing our uh, brooms call or it could have can been you a explain what call. the brooms? And the could have been a BNG call. What is a BNG call? Might have been a bride and groom call. I'm not actually sure what our call was. The brides and grooms of Gaia. We had a call for Saturday. Talk about business stuff. We're getting a website put together and put up with a forum. And uh, we're going to do blog. And we're going to do a podcast. And we're going to do videos. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get ourselves organized to get the the brides and grooms contract and vows out to the planet to anybody who's interested in having a new paradigm a new way of uh, organizing themselves around life so we're coming up to the roads um what's what is what is this called a road roadblock roadblock and it says um big sign up there saying stay home <laughs> there's a virus in Clennon county <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see you Going tomorrow. Heading back. Yeah, we'll, pre we'll see you tomorrow with your uh, home cure. Oh, okay. Just make <laughs> well, tea out I'll of it. I'll be already. Yep. Yeah. Don't give me bad breath. I'll It'll be this. good breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Dan. Oh, there's Dan. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a house at the Hoko too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The call today, you were saying? Yeah, the call today. So the brides and grooms of Gaia. Most everyone uh, listening probably knows what that is, but for anyone who doesn't, basically a brider and a groom of Gaia is a partnership with Gaia as the bride or as the groom, depending on what you know. We talked you're about it. Yeah, and we talked about it in the previous episode. Right. So you make your choices and your decisions, taking Gaia into consideration, and as a as a partner in the decision. Gaia wants to host a high frequency reality. Well, she is going to host a high frequency paradigm. And so, as brides and grooms, we join her in that intent. And we do it in a um, ceremonial, in a very factual, and a very contractual basis, in a way that's well defined. Because oftentimes we found <laughs> the people side of the uh, arrangement. Yeah, that's the one that needs to work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Um, there's, 
we have talked about this in a previous episode, but um, one of the funny things about the contract, uh, basically the call is that we had today, different people, and we talked about this drink, the ginger lemon and honey drink, yep. and uh, getting recipes on how to make it most effective. Um, and, you know, it's like one of the things about that I found interesting, some individuals within the group were having issues signing their contract because they've had difficult marriages or they have cultural things around marriage in the past or they think that, you know, the, the whole religious thing, you know, the price of Jesus, our nuns, you know. Yep, exactly. I don't know what the priests are, are they the grooms of Jesus? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. But, so there's a lot of programs and stuff running, but those are human things because basically the name is brought forward as a long life commitment and partnership um, of equal people, uh, entities, right? You're a divine eternal being and so is Gaia and it's just a union between you and Gaia. Um, in different cultures, Gaia is either masculine or, or feminine, but we all, I always choose to speak of Gaia as feminine because that's how we understand Gaia in the present society, and present culture. But there's both, really. And um, I don't know why we were talking about the brooms call today, or the, the Bryce and Grooms Gaia call. Um, probably because we were talking about the lemon, ginger, and honey recipe that we were going to give to the guard of the reservation. <laughs> yes, we're so going to make a batch for him. The part that would matter, <laughs> the part that matters, you know, is of this whole rigmarole is bolstering your immune system if you have any any worry about getting a cold or a fever or a flu or a corona or anything. The cure isn't hiding yourself away. The cure is having a strong immune system. And having a clear understanding of how to create a strong immune system. So part of that was what we were talking to with the kids on the ride out here. Is what do you do to have a strong immune system? And sometimes it's the opposite of what you might think. Although nowadays most people are well enough educated to realize mm, maybe all that stuff we ever thought was true wasn't necessarily true. So probably the best way to segue into that story might be your story with um, cleaning your house. <laughs> Well, it's well but known know that if you clean about. your house too much, you know, you're going to get, your kids are going to get sick. And that's what I experienced as a, a young mother when I was 20. But I think that what's really been fascinating me about this whole thing is the change in culture. I sent out a newsletter yesterday that gave people very simple things that you can do to take advantage of this time. We've been talking about a split for a long time now. I know right. I've been talking about it since 2010. Right, we were thinking it was coming at 2012 and that didn't work out. And then yeah. we figured out you're retiring on 2017, so that's when it's gonna be. <laughs> that didn't work out. Well, this split has been happening since the late 1800s, right? Yeah. But it was supposed to have very large things happen so that Basically, people choose what reality they're living in. And the best example that I can think of is the, uh, the Native American viewpoint on the three days of darkness, which could be 20. What? <laughs> or it could be like two years. Well, are you kidding me? <laughs> but basically, oh, what's the, that? Sorry, the cultural ask, uh, teaching is don't fall into fear. If you fall into fear, there are going to be days or years of darkness. But if you don't fall into fear and you stay in your natural frequency, which is high, it's going to be nirvana. So that's what I've been seeing. I know a lot of people around the world and I've seen a lot of them. The majority are having the best week of their life and the best time of their life. Children at home, home education, you know homeschooling um, it's completely different it's a different different thing 
and it creates a different type of society, a different type of citizen, if that citizen has been homeschooled. When, um, and also the school work, right? I mean homework, uh, working from home, I should say. So when I was in university in Ireland, um, I got one of the top uh, grades in for my year and I, I didn't get the top grade by one point. One point, I was second. And the person who got the, that point was a girl who was actually the youngest student in the, in the year and she had been homeschooled. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, she had been school, schooled her entire life and that's then the person who, the, the person that beat me. <laughs> and how was I educated? Well, I could pretty much say I was homeschooled because I never went to school. <laughs> I used to go to school to once a week or so to catch up on it, on the stuff that was going on, uh, get some homework, get the schoolwork, and then I would, um, and then I'd come back for the exams, and I passed everything, the grades and everything. Uh, but yeah, it was like I didn't exactly subscribe to the system. I'm not saying that, you know, that's why we got the the top marks necessarily I have no proof of it but it's kind of strange that both people the top ones by far because we were one point ahead uh, I mean separate from each other but we were 20, 10 or 20 points from everybody else so is it a coincidence that we both didn't subscribe to the educational system or not I don't think so I really don't and the systems of education that are coming up should be really really fascinating i'm really looking forward to hearing from everybody here from you what educational systems you're creating for yourselves and your children on my end um, as you know i'm creating with uh, three other partners um, what I'm, we're calling the ibens academy which is also an online educational academy for learning all the, the IBEMS method, method and different tools for empowerment. And getting certified, right, to teach them. Yeah, so. eventually, yeah, we'll have a certification program in place. We hadn't planned to launch until, you know, May, um, at the earliest, to launch some of the classes and courses. But because of this crisis, we're actually going to launch, in a couple of weeks, we're going to launch the yeah. online um, lecture hall, which is going to be live lectures, and it's going to we're going to open with five lectures, one per week, that help you to be empowered and basically give give you tools on what to do through this time of change. Now yeah. that you're home, now that you have your kids at home, and also education about the virus. What does it mean at a global scale? What does it mean at a mystical level, right? But also some of those tools are going to be mystical tools too. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be launching that uh, with these uh, three women and uh, I'm going to send it out on my newsletter, all the details on how you can join. And uh, They're gonna be very, very uh, affordable because um, we need to, get it out there as, to as many people as we can because well my aim my goal basically is to create leaders right and I, for me if you're listening to this you're one of the world leaders the social leaders you're going to be leading your family your neighborhoods your workplace everything so that's why I'm we're, we're working really hard right now to launch that in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Can't wait to see. It should be exciting. <laughs> it did add a lot of work on my plate because we weren't expecting to launch anything until May. But you know. You're a good workaholic though sometimes. <laughs> We're all very good workaholics in the company so yeah we've got it covered. <laughs> But yeah, it's like the, the restructuring of society that's really exciting to me. What about you? Yeah, I find myself having a hard time, you know, 
calling that a crisis or a quarantine and all that other stuff because it's like so much I mean I understand I see at least that there are some people who are having a horrible time with this but jeez I mean it couldn't be better honestly can you explain why you think it couldn't be better for um, me anyway and us our friends are close our kids they're here I spent the day the whole week with Cameron and Grace and normally I would Cameron would be in California going to school and college and all of that we did a video and we did a bike rides and we did I mean all kinds of fun stuff together all day long and we even slept in till 10 and we stayed up till midnight we ate ice cream I mean we had a great time and this that wouldn't happen if they were where they would usually be this time of day. Grace would have her schedule set from six or five in the morning until nine o'clock at night. If I ask her, can you come over? You want to hang out? She has 700 things going on. And now she has time to not do anything for a little while. Except hang out with dad. <laughs> yeah, but still just there's like... time in the day for doing just exactly nothing. And there's time in the day for going for a five mile run. And there's time of the day for doing an essay on the computer. And there's time of the day for watching a movie and having lunch. I mean, all of a sudden, time is completely available to experience however you want it. I think that's the best part about it. The distractions on your time that felt so important, they're gone. The things that were so hugely important, eliminated. Now it's very simple. Although you're going back to work on Wednesday, aren't you? Well, we want to go probably. We're still on the fence about it because we like to go fishing. We like to be on the boat. We're going to go this time to catch food for the village, which is its own kind of interesting experience. And they want us to catch fish that, well, we don't usually catch a lot of, but it's the ones they pick that they want us to catch. So, uh, Lake Cod, <clears throat> there's are usually in rocks, so it's a little bit tricky to catch those with your rope because it gets stuck on the rocks. And um, there's either a lot of them or there's none of them. So we gotta nail them down, right? And rockfish, which, you know, we catch some. Again, not a lot, a lot. 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds would be a lot. And um, the drive wants to give us 500 bucks to get for fuel and food and go out. And then when we come in with the fish, they'll reimburse for the costs, pay the crew a little bit of labor, and then I guess the fish will get cut up and distributed to the village. So it's kind of an interesting twist on it, right? I noticed um, when I was looking, well, normally this time of year we'd be fishing seven days a week, catching black cod. And um, in about a month, catching halibut. And then a little bit after that, catching salmon. And uh, sometime through it all, catching rockfish. So we'd normally be pretty busy when the weather got nice. So today was a nice day, flat, calm, and sunny, and warm, and beautiful. And right smack dab in the middle of fish season. <laughs> and we were riding bikes in the forest. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of nice. Now next week we get opportunity to go catch some fish, make the boat move around, practice our art I think that'll be a nice experience it won't be um, the same we're gonna make ten thousand dollars in three days and it's all about money this is all got a lot of different purposes we're gonna get some money enough to cover the bills the expenses and we're gonna feed our village of people which is pretty dang cool that feels good right yeah that feels good yes. now all we have to do is make our village of people a little bit bigger because we have the capacity to have a lot more food come out. Connection, yeah. food to people. Yep. Not connection, food to money. It's food, or not connection, fish to money. It's fish to people. Yeah, I was just hoping that we could have had a, some sort of system where we can actually send the fish to everybody that needs it. But we don't have a freezer or so can't really send it. Yeah, it's a bizarre part too because it's not like people stop eating. 
but all of the market for fish is gone, eliminated zero. Yeah, it's really bizarre. It's really so really great. And I think I guess it's because um, the companies that process the fish, they don't have the people to bring in to do the processing because they don't have like groups of people together. And the people that they sell the fish to are usually people like at restaurants, and the restaurants are hampered in some ways. Uh, grocery stores, still, I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't want to be buying fish. But our market is zero. If we catch it, there's no one, to, no one to buy it. I was reading about tuna boats that had gone out fishing for tuna sometime in the middle of February before anything happened. They were out for a month. They came in with a full load of fish. No idea anything happened while they were gone. And all of a sudden, there's no place and no one to buy their fish. Yeah, it's really bizarre. So they're stuck with a boat full of fish and no one to buy it. Uh, they're trying to sell them off the boat one at a time. But, you know, that process is uh, significantly a lot different than unloading them all to a wholesaler and having them sell fish. Right. It is fish to an individual person. Mm -hmm. And in uh, Europe, it's the same story. It's like planet-wide. All of a sudden, all the boats that go catch fish are all tied up because nobody will buy the fish. What happened? Everybody all of a sudden stopped eating? Not really. So what did happen? What happened? You see that strange yeah. Irish co-op of 70 boats tied up the entire fleet of boats because nobody will buy the fish. No one will come to the auction or I don't know what it is. The one boat went out, left the dock. The price for the fish he was catching, some kind of a hake or uh, I don't know what it was, something like that. It was $4 or 4 50, four pounds, 50 pence. Uh, you know, I don't know that word very good, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> four, four and a half pounds when they left the dock. And then when they came back, all this stuff had happened. They were only gone for five or six days. When they came back, that same fish was only worth 41 cents a pound. What? Oh, 450 to 41 cents. That probably won't even pay their bills. No, because they have to pay the owner of the quota 50 cents a pound right. just to fish. Right. So they owed the owner of the quota 9 cents. Oh my gosh. Plus the fuel, plus everything else. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a topsy-turvy cool. world. It is. Are fish and chip shops in England usually to go anyways? <laughs> it's a difference. Well, I don't know. Yeah. All of it's a sudden, like nobody way. wants to eat fish? Mm -hmm. Just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's when it comes in the build new structures, you know. This is that's this is what I'm talking about. Stop relying on the old structures; they have stopped. So you need to start building new structures. How do you get the fish to the people, right, around the planet? How do you do that? Maybe we can get some ideas in the comment section. That'd be good. <laughs> I think I've read a few, a few, a few people have been trying to go direct to people with their apps. And about 10 years ago, I thought of the idea of having an app. People could um, log into the app while we're out fishing, see what we're catching, if they want to have some of that fish when we come in, put their name in the hat. Then when we get in, everyone that's got their name in the hat, send them to fish. And of course, it's on an app, so they just pay on the app. Our job is to catch it and ship it. Their job is to look at it and say, I want that, and buy it. So how come that didn't work out for you? Well, back then I was drinking. You were drunk? <laughs> yeah. So I did that instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about now? Would you do that now? You're sober now. Yeah, I'm not drinking now. I could do that now, but at the same time, the things that seem important to me have more to do with uh, promoting and expanding people's awareness by and through supporting the things that you do. So trying to create a new business that distracts me from supporting what you want to do and what you need to do, what you're here to do for the planet, it's just harder to engage in. It's just less interesting. So I'd be happy to catch fish for somebody else if they want to write an app <laughs> and, get and a do freezer. it once in a while and not have it as the primary job. And get a freezer. Sure, get a freezer, pack it up, ship it out. Well, get other people to do that. I want to do that. 
No, I said get somebody else to get the freezer and pack yeah. it up and send yep. it. You can give it to them and they can they do can that, do part, that right? part. Because that's what they probably really, really want to do. I want to make sure, I want to make sure the return to the earth files is written. I want to make sure the course that eliminates or at least greatly diminishes the veil of forgetfulness for whatever period of time it is, that course gets done. I want to see the IBEN's Academy happening. I want to see Brides and Grooms page and forum and blog and uh, podcast and video, YouTube, whatever that is. I want to see that happening. So we're going to uh, take a little break. Oh, yeah. Because we're going to drop off some medicine to somebody who's not feeling very well on the way home. All right. We'll talk to you in a few seconds because for you, there won't be no break. <laughs> we'll just be back. And we're back. <laughs> we just dropped off some of that delicious honey, ginger, lemon, and mud water. I didn't put mud mix. water in it this time. You didn't? Not mud awesome. water. I used the 10 sacred blend, I think, of mushrooms. Oh, the 10 mushroom blend. Okay. It might have been the 7 mushroom blend. 7 mushroom blend? Whatever it has chaga in it, it has cordyleps or something, and it has lion's manes or something else in it. Bunch of good mushrooms. You need a little bit of mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah, so fascinating. Um, we have like different energies and people in our communities that we belong to. Uh, some of them, like you saw or heard, you know, the person who's uh, guarding the res, he's um, a senior citizen and he was fairly enthusiastic and happy doing his job. And, we're going to bring him some of that medicine tomorrow. And we dropped it off at some other friend's house. Um, who, uh, well, one of them is not feeling too good right now. So, but they're all going to take it. <laughs> yep, because it's yummy anyway. Because it's yummy anyways. And it protects you, so. Well, I suppose one of the things that I've heard a lot, and this is something that I thought we could talk about, um, is people saying that it's nothing's happening, it's not really real. Um, I think with regards to that people are not dying from it, right? And it feels to me like a lot of that is true. I think that the level of panic around the planet and the level of all these actions such as closing schools and closing everything Whoa, my dog on the road. Um, it's OTT for what's actually happening. I do believe that. I think that there, there aren't that many people dying from this virus as they're letting on or saying. I think other things are killing them. Um, and also, it's people who are very weak right now. Probably so, panicked. And panic, yeah, stress levels are huge, right? Yeah. So that can lower your immune system too. But at the same time, I know and I realize that yes, there are people who are dying, but it's like one of those things, you know, more people die of al alcohol related accidents than this thing every single day. Yet we're not doing anything about people drinking alcohol. Well, we did, but close, now, all that. We did close all the bars. Exactly, <laughs> but now, with this thing, all the bars cl are closed. And yeah, I'm that doesn't sure, make sense, does it? And I'm pretty sure that when we come, maybe somebody puts together some stats on the alcohol-related deaths and injuries for this time period, I'm pretty sure it's going to be down. Way down. By millions of people not dying every day on the planet. So it's, it's one of those things, you know? It's it's, a, it's like, yeah, I, what, I'm one of those individuals who have been living my entire life, and Larry kind of mentioned it earlier, uh, disinfecting everything, right? Um, it's just one of those quirky things, one of um, my personality things. I have it under control pretty much, but it comes out sometimes. You know, I, 
I really feel uncomfortable at restaurants because of the tables and chairs, everybody touch them with their saliva as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, I don't like to put salt on my food or ketchup or anything, pepper, because everybody has touched them with their hands. So that's me normally, right? That's me, you, like, this is how I've lived for 53 years or whatever it is. Maybe 54, I don't remember. Um, and now the entire planet is turning that way, you know? So I would be the last person to say, don't wash your hands, right? Because to me, that's the normal. <laughs> yeah, it's fine to wash but your hands. It's fine to wash your hands and disinfect your car or whatever, you know? <laughs> and I prefer for people to, you know, wear gloves when they're handling my food before they give it to me at a restaurant. And I do prefer to grab it from a window than going inside. <laughs> So, so it's an ideal world for you. Exactly. So for me, and also I've been telling people, you know, school system. The school system creates slaves. So I'm super fascinated and interesting, interested in finding out how this will resolve, what kind of citizens we're going to be creating as we homeschool them. At the same time, I know that there are people who are dying from this thing. I know some people say it's all lies. But I can't imagine, I mean, I know it's possible and it's happened before that the entire world, governments, all the governments around the world, all the media around the world are making it all up, you know, and nobody has died and the coronavirus doesn't exist. So I think something is happening, something does exist, something is making people sick, something is killing people. Whether it's a virus or not, I'm not sure. Like we talked about earlier, you know, the link between 5G and the corona outbreak, you know, it's very, like, there's a paper trail <laughs> in that link, which is kind of, yeah. Last year I talked about, well, this split is gonna happen. And I suspect it might have something to do with 5G. I don't know how it'll happen with 5G, but, you know, it just feels like it is. And I can really see the difference in people and their reactions and way of behaving uh, around things. It's so clear, you know, oh, that there is a split between the people who are terrified and afraid and the people who are not. Somebody mentioned, well, I went to the park and I've never seen so many people at the park playing, having fun. I saw no fear. And another person says, yeah, I went for a walk and there was people jogging and laughing and talking and there was no fear. And that's because everybody who's fearful is stuck in their home with their doors locked. Yeah, probably true. You know, and the people you're seeing outside and taking fresh air and taking the children to the park, they're not afraid. So yeah, something definitely, obviously, right, is happening with our society, is happening with our planet. To me, it's very exciting. And I was, well, one of the conversations we had earlier with the kids is, I don't know, I, I know like thousands of people around the planet. And I don't know anybody, not one person, who's sick with the coronavirus, or one of, that they know somebody who's sick with the coronavirus. Not one person, so, it's just weird to me because I know thousands of people that none of them know somebody who has a coronavirus or has died of it. They've all heard of people, but nobody knows anybody. So, and then of course I know and I feel that when this all starts dying down, they're gonna say that's because we sent everybody home, right? And we're gonna keep everybody home so it doesn't Come back. Go, come back. Yeah. And it's the start of a new society. And how it goes, does it go complete power over others, dictatorial and people being vaccinated forcefully or shot, you know? Or does it go the other way where we all have a choice and we decide what happens to our bodies and how we live our lives. That's, I've been there right now, 
but I have full confidence in the human collective that as a collective we're going to make the right choices right and choices for a high frequency experience. yes high choice for like the right, right choices choice for a high, frequency, high frequency exactly because high experience. you know there are other choices to make for a low frequency experience that are also the right ones but they're the right ones for a low frequency experience i right. think we're done with that So I'm going to go into a lot of detail about these things on uh, live lectures. I hope you can make it. <laughs> so what else shall we talk about? <laughs> Maybe you could give a little update on Lucy. Lucy's, Lucy's doing great. Yeah. Do you want to talk about her? I want to hear about her. <laughs> Well, she's been doing really great. She's eating more, she's walking a little bit more, she's more enthusiastic. She is on a lot of painkillers still uh, because of her hips, especially. Um, and the, on Tuesday, we went to have her uh, bandages changed and her stump looks so much healthier. It was incredible. Um, and we take her back on Tuesday to have it again. It's once a week we're taking her to have her bandages changed because she's having stem cell therapy, so you don't change them every day. That was the first notice we had of the world changing because uh, one day we had to change that bandage every single day with heavy sedation. I would have a four hour drive to do it because there's no vet close. And then the next day we'd have to change it once a week yeah. That was the first day I noticed the world was changing. <laughs> yeah. It does become easier. It does become more supportive. I think. That's how it feels to me. So it seems Lucy's changed also. From uh, slightly aloof and interested in the world around her to um, absolutely enthralled with you. With me? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit strange. She follows me around. If I'm gone from her sight for like half an hour and I come back, she's just <laughs> over the top happy, whining and wanting to get closer to me. I have to get down to reach her and hug her and kiss her and cuddle her for ages before she comes down. <laughs> She's just insane. She's never used she to be that She was never high. like that before. She was never. She was more like, yeah, okay, I know you exist in my life, but actually looking out into the fields and making like, sure, sure yeah. everything's tickety-boo, that was her life. You know? That was the most important thing. Yeah. And not no more. Although she really cares about what's in the yard, she more cares about where you are in the yard. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty big change. Yeah, we'll see if that change sticks or whether it changes back when she's <laughs> feeling better. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> Romeo's changed too. He was a mop, and now he's not. <laughs> I shaved him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a long-haired dog, and now he's a short-haired dog. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's a Portuguese water dog. Romeo is and he needs to be clipped on a regular basis and I hadn't done it because of the Lucy situation and then I got sick and everything. Um, I got sick, <laughs> got a tummy bug, it wasn't a flu, uh, but I'm better now. So I gave him a clip, haircut and he looks amazing, he looks so nice. He's such an adorable dog. Yep, he's really turning into a sweetheart. about done. <laughs> Sunday dinner tomorrow. Yeah. But not too many are coming. Not too many are coming to our Sunday dinner. <laughs> Alright, so stay stay cool, stay happy, stay sane, and start creating these new structures. Okay? Okay. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Will do. We'll see you next time.